the Hansel woman. The brass edging went all along the heavy mahogany countertop. Michael O'Brien sat tall on his special chair beside the glass partition that separated the drapery from the bar. It was as if this chair melded into him and he into the chair in a shared, assured elegance, though today he needed the support of extra cushions as the treatment took its toll on his angular frame. From his vantage point, Michael watched as Marjorie sat perched at the bar counter doing the accounts. This was her domain. Michael looked for signs of reassurance as his wife's eyes raced up and down the columns of pounds, shillings and pence. But Marjorie's eyes were not easy to read. Even after 22 years together, he knew she still had her secrets. Marjorie took a deep breath and smiled over at her handsome husband. He had enough to contend with and didn't need to know the full extent of their debt. Since the tannery closed, they had been left with a supply of men's overalls that were now impossible to sell. Even communion dresses were not much in demand. Last year, they had all but sold out by the month of May. They would soon have to be parcelled back into blue paper and stored in their boxes in the hope that next year things might improve in Carrick. Companies were slow to take back unsold stock and suppliers were demanding their dues. She wasn't sure how long more she could hide the demand for final payment notices from Michael. Marjorie envied her husband's ease with people. She was in awe of his patience with the most demanding or contrary customer. He made them all feel special and until recently he'd scale the ladder as often as required to take down endless sizes and colours of shirts, jumpers and cardigans. He wore his tape measure as proudly as a doctor his stethoscope and was meticulous in sizing of men for suits. We have the measure of you now, sir, he'd joke. The women, too, loved his easy charm and courtesy. Nothing was too much of a bother, and if a customer left behind a floor strewn with boxes, Michael would apologise for disappointing them. But customers knew that the Big C had paid an unwelcome visit to O'Brien's of Main Street. News spreads quickly in a small town and some noticed the way he pushed his back against the edge of the drapery counter, as if to mute his pain by a sharper one. The fair day on Thursday will bring a crowd in. Marjorie made a stab at positivity. I might even need you to help me at the bar, so get all the rest you can now. Come on, we'll put the kettle on and take advantage of the lull. Marjorie turned and walked briskly to the kitchen before her husband saw her eyes well up. Early the following morning, the white corner of an envelope brightened the heaviness of the shop door. Like an angel's wings, it flapped hope into Marjorie's tired heart. As she lifted the envelope, her fingers traced coins. She released them into her own palm and they glimmered there like sunlight on the shore. She had been rescued from despair by the kindness of the Hansel woman from Carrick Begg.